start beating ourselves up and we're going to start letting God change the, uh, use our bad. Somebody say, God can use my bad to show something good. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Remember that word creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of Amen. To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you, ye be ye reconciled to God. For he has made us to be sin. He, for we made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Uh, for, for a minute, say, man, we're going to use for us. We're going to talk about a mess that became a message. Say that with me. Say a mess that became a message. Amen. That, and that goes to toward all of us because we all at some point in our life have been messed up. Amen, somebody. Huh? And, and, and what God wants to do is take our mess and turn it to a what? A message. God want to take your life that was all messed up and show somebody else what he can do with a mess. Come on, somebody. Amen. And if you look in the Bible, you find this, this, this happening over and over again from the Old Testament all the way to the New. You find God choosing people with flaws, amen, and using them to do a great work, amen, huh? If you study the Bible any length of time, you're going to find out that them folk back in the, in the Bible days were messed up like we were messed up. But if God could only choose perfect people, then there would be nobody for him to use. Romans 3 and 23 says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If all have sinned, and, 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 and he even says uh, on, in another scripture, uh, where, where there's, they said, ask where, is there any, right, any righteous? And the Lord said, no, not one. No, not, not one righteous. Amen. When God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, you can find one righteous person. It started off of like 50 or 100 or something. Started off at 50 and went all the way down the way. He said, you find one, I won't destroy them. Couldn't find not. <laughs> not one. In the Twin Cities. Lord have mercy. Found some. I read this before. I got a little list here of, of some. Uh, just a few. This is not all of them. But I want to share this with you. Uh, many of you hadn't read the Bible, but the Bible is full of flawed people. It's Jacob, see, Jacob, he says, Jacob was a cheater. We'll call a trickster. Amen? Huh? But God yet used Jacob mightily. Amen? Gave him a vision. Amen? Uh, uh, Peter had a temple. Amen? Peter would go off on folk and cut folk ears off and all that. Jesus had to put the man ear back on. David was wicked. He had an affair, had a man killed for his wife. But yet he's known to be the greatest king of Israel. A man after God's own, own heart. Paul was a murderer. You didn't know Paul was going around killing folk. In the name, <laughs> in the name of God, he was killing Christians. Mm -hmm. Miriam was a gossiper. Martha was a worrier. Gideon was insecure. <laughs> Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was depressed. Moses stuttered. 
Zacchaeus was short. Abraham was old. And Lazarus was even dead. But God still used all of these people. And this is just a short list. Amen. So God, he specializes in taking our mess and, and, and using it in spite of us. John 15 and 16. Go there with me for a minute. John 15 and 16. This is what the Lord says. Jesus says, he says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen what? You. And ordained you. That means he, he sits you down. He done, he done received you. He done chose you. Now he's going to teach you some things. And then he's going to give you a commission to go out and teach other people. That ye will go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye ask in the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Here's one thing we know. When Jesus was choosing the disciples, and we, even in his, as he calls and chooses us today, God already know you messed up. Remember that. God already know everything about you. But yet he still chose you. Amen. I like to put, I, I, was, I was meditating one day just on what I'm talking about, and, and it just came to me that Jesus chose me with me in me. Say that. Say, Jesus chose me with me in me. He chose you while we were your what? yet sinners. Uh, listen now. And all throughout the Bible, God chose these people while they were still messed up. While they were yet messed up, God chose them to do a work. Amen. How many times we hear folks say, I, I go to church when I get it together. Man, I'm messed up right now, man. I can't go. Man, look, we hear that kind of stuff all the time. Amen. God is looking for us to come as we what are. That ain't talking about your clothes. That's talking about your condition of your heart. The things that you're doing, come on with them things. God wants you to come to him even when you're doing wrong. Abraham, the father of faith. Let's talk about Abraham just for a little bit. He's the father of faith. Did you know that when, when God called Abraham, Abraham uh, was a heathen? He didn't know nothing about God. Worshiping idols over there with his with folk. They were worshiping idols and all that. And God called him. He chose him. He said, I want you to get from amongst your family. Hmm? He didn't know nothing about God. God spoke to him. He said, I want you to get from amongst your kin, your family, and I'm going to make you a great nation. But what did Abraham do? He still took his nephew Lot with him. Come on, somebody. Huh? He disobeyed God, but yet God stayed with him. Huh? Yeah. He had to go save Lot. Because he would never supposed to bring Lot. Amen. But God continued to bless him. Not because of who Abraham was. Because of God's word. Amen. Amen. He said, that I'm going to do this, and he brought it to pass. Regardless of what Abraham did, Abraham had a baby out of wedlock. Yeah. He, God had told him, I'm going to give you a son. Come on, somebody. Huh? This is the father of faith I'm talking about. Huh? And God knew he had all this in him when he chose him. Amen. We got to learn to stop beating ourselves up and stop beating other folk up because they messed up. I said something right there. We got to learn to stop beating ourselves up and other folk up because they messed up. Come on, somebody. Because God can call them just the way they are. Don't nothing need to happen in their life. They don't need to change nothing for God to choose them. 
just like he chose you when you was all out there. Come on, somebody. Hmm? He called me in. I'm a drug addict. Right. And he chose me in spite of what I was doing. Y'all listening to me? That's why I don't look down on nobody. I can't look down on nobody because I know how messed up I was. And if he could do it for me, he can change anybody. He can do a wonder in anybody's life. You know, just because, you, you know, if you'd have saw me back then, ain't no way you'd have said, man, I would be, be, be a pastor or a preacher. That dude out there strung out on drugs, man. How you going? I wish I had some folk that really been messed up. I guess y'all been kind of pretty good over y'all life. I wish I had some folk that really been just messed up. If we just sit down and talk, you'd be like, you'd be like, you did what? Which what? No, man, you ain't never did nothing like that, is you? Man, yeah. And did it with a straight face. I don't know about y'all, but you know, I didn't hide my sin. I did it. I did it to the full. Come on now. I did what I did with a straight face. We went to the club. We wasn't hiding in the back of the club, trying to hide from folk. Whoa. Come on, somebody, be real with me. We want to hide. You put on your best stuff. You ain't finna hide. You clean. Got the jeans, starched up, man, fresh. Goddamn, did that with a man? With a, come on. With a smile on my face, I'm up up in there. Man, shoot. Give me a bag, man. Give me a drink. Shoot, let's get the party start. Huh? Yeah. They ain't there till they close, till they cut the lights on to shoot. I preach an hour, y'all y'all get pretty looking crazy. I preach an hour. Shoot, stayed in the club from 9 to 2. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't, the time, like, where the time go? We just got here. No, you been here five hours. With your grunk self. Come on, man. Then you ain't th then you ain't ready to stop. Yeah. Yeah, but we ain't, but we impatient in the house of God. They, they running, he running out. It don't take all that. He ain't got to preach the whole Bible today. Say song for Wednesday or something. Yeah. We still messed up. We still, we still got some mess. But God, but God can use that mess. I'm a witness. He can use your mess. And all He does is He, he, he grows you up. This, see the word. The word message is two words. It's mess and age. Why right, well, you got to grow up? Come on, somebody, you got to grow up. You know when a little baby uh, was born, you know, uh, they had to be changed. They, all they had to do is eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom when you were a little baby. You know that? Somebody got to clean your mess. Are y'all still with me? But as you grow up, what we do, we potty train them, right? Huh? We potty train them. We teach them how to go to the bathroom. We teach them how to wipe their mess, right? Now, why do we do that? We teach them how to wipe their mess because we know they're going to be messing on themselves the rest of their life. Oh, Boom, shaka laka. Huh? And we ain't got time to be following them around and wiping their mess all the rest of their life. So you got to learn how to wipe your own mess. 
Now, as you grow in the Holy and you come in as a babe, you can't, you can't clean yourself. But as you grow in the church, you ought to be able to wipe your mess and even help somebody else with their mess. Are y'all still with me? Because it ain't just about, come on, somebody. Huh? And I'm closing with this because I, I, I don't think I, I think I've expounded enough. Look, it, I even I, it, I understand it that even the last thing you do is you mess on yourself when you die. That's what I've come to understand. Amen. So mess is a part of our life, and you're gonna be in and out of it. Listen to me now. You're gonna be in and out of mess the rest of your life. Amen. Huh? But remember that God wants to take your mess and he wants to use it as a message. What's my message? What God has delivered me from. And guess what? It ain't just one thing. God done delivered us, all of us in here enough to preach for a hundred years. Just telling one thing after another what God has delivered me from. Because it just wasn't a big thing. It just wasn't the drugs he delivered me from. He delivered me from being selfish. Come on, somebody. He delivered me from so many things, man. I don't forgot some stuff he delivered me from. You hear me? He done healed me of things. He got, God has done so much. And that's, and that's your message. That's your message to tell folks. That's what God has done for you. And don't be ashamed to give them the juicy parts. Y'all know what I mean, right? Don't be ashamed to just make it plain. Look, man. Uh, look. Just tell them, say, man, I was a hoe. Because if you was, you just was. Huh? Tell them, man, man, I was, man, I was a crackhead. Now, I tell them that. That's how I tell them. I don't say I was on cocaine. I tell them, man, I was a crackhead because that's what I was. I run around smoking crack. Yeah, my man make it sound a little. Yeah. You on cocaine? Oh, you just don't look cocaine. You just don't look cocaine. Nah, man, I was on crack. I was just like them folk y'all see walking the street looking for another rock. That was me. Huh? Walk on the street all night. Huh? I'd be gone two or three days. I ain't at the house. Out in the street. Thank God I had a one wife that wasn't scared. She'd come get me. Get in the car. I said, all right, I'm going to go home. <laughs> Thank God she come get me sometime. I ain't lying. I would call her in the middle of the night. She wasn't scared. I'd be like, come get me. She'd come over there in the hood get me. Yeah. Amen. A amen. And if I've been out there for a few days, she'd go run me some bath water, let me clean myself, get, fix me something to eat, put me in the bed. Huh? Look, man. Huh? Yeah. I know what he'll do. And I ain't ashamed to tell nobody. Because you ain't no better than me. I'm convinced. You might not want to tell yours, but I know you've been on some crazy too. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, you've been messed up. You still got a little mess on your night, but God gonna do, he gonna, he gonna work with that. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking down on folks that's, you know, especially them that's been where you at. You ain't all that. They call God done clean you up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Yeah, it is real today. It's real, real today. Yeah. Yeah, we we good we good at messing it up. We're not too good at cleaning it up. That's why we need the Lord. I don't know about you, but I I, just, I, I was good at getting strung out, but I couldn't I couldn't heal myself. I I had went too far. If I'd have stopped when I was just smoking weed, I might have been able to handle it, but it just kept escalating. I went from smoking weed to putting crack on my weed, then graduated to smoking the pipe. And see, it's a, you keep going, it's a process, you just keep going from, from bad to worse. Are y'all still with me? Huh? And I was on my way to shooting up, that's where I was headed to, and I never got there, but I was, that was, that was the road I was on, okay? Because you keep, you keep going from one extreme to the next, and there's no end until you did. Yeah. Yeah. So young folk, I'm telling you, leave it alone. Don't even start. If you don't start, you ain't got to quit. I said, if you never start, you won't have to quit. I don't care what it is. Don't, don't, just don't do it. Because it has no respect to person. It'll take anybody down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since you know your pastor was messed up, uh, pray for me. I still got some issues. I ain't like I used to be, but you ain't where I got to be. Y'all hear me? I say ain't where I used to be, but I ain't still ain't where I got to be. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Somebody say I've messed up. But that ain't the end. Huh? Some of y'all in here done messed up just last week. But you're still here, ain't you? Some of you messed up this morning before you got to church, but you're still here. Ain't that so? Huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going we're gonna to open the altar. Maybe someone need, need to receive Jesus, amen, because your Lord can begin to clean you up, amen. You may be here and you want to come and say, yeah, I messed up, but Lord, I want to be right. If you're here, you need a, need a church home place to belong to. Maybe you've been saying, I want to come and unite. You, you can come today, amen. Today is a good day to unite with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And ultimately, if you're just here and you're saying, Pastor, that word spoke to me. And I, and uh, if that word spoke to you, just get up. Come on to the altar. If, if, if that word spoke to you about, about where you are now and how you even look at other people, because you need to be delivered from that. Amen. You need to be delivered from how you you judging yourself. Because you, you, you can't be perfect. Long as you in this flesh, you are going to be messed up. Okay. And you got to you got to come to grips with that. And when you come to grips with that within yourself, that's when you can look at other folk and love them in spite of what they do and what they say. You know? Yeah. Because we're all messed up. That's why we needed a Savior. Huh? Yeah. That's why we needed a Savior. And we didn't just need him uh, uh, one time and dipped in the water. No, we need him. Come on, somebody. I need him all the days of my life. Because we're always just a moment away from doing something dumb. My wife used to say, 
She used to irritate me. She used to say this. She said, you stupid. That used to irritate me. But she was right because the stuff I was doing was just stupid. Didn't make no sense what I was doing. You stupid. You dumb. Stuff that I was doing was stupid, it was dumb, it did not make any sense what I was doing. The way God was blessing me, it didn't make no sense for me to be doing that. The way I was brought up in church and the way my parents, it didn't make no sense. It just didn't, it wasn't me. Amen. There comes a time in all of our life when we have to truly to examine ourselves. Amen. You have to get away from you have to get away from family to really look at yourself sometimes. You have to get away from friends and the job, the work. You gotta get away from all that to really be able to truly examine yourself. To get outside of yourself and look at yourself. And be honest with yourself. You know. You know, man, you know, oh man, see. You know, I was wrong. I said that to her. I mean, little things like that. You know, I, you know, I, I need to do better, cause, you know. Amen. But we know what we do. We know who we do it to, and all that. Amen. Here's one word that should bother us. We as Christians just think these certain things should not be spoken about us. And one thing that should never be spoken about us is that we messy. When people say somebody messy, that ooh, that's bad. They saying you ain't no good. That's what they saying, and they saying you stank. He stank. Don't be around him. He's that what messy means. You no good. Stank. We all know some messy folk, don't you? Yeah. You don't want to be like messy folk, do you? That's why we call them messy. Because we say we not. We say we clean, right? Yeah, we, we say we clean. How clean are you? mind a little commercial about the toilet tissue. The little bears. Talking about the good toilet tissue. The cheap toilet tissue. How clean are you? Yeah, you can think about that later. But I don't care how good you wipe. Yeah. You got some uncleanliness about you. Hold on to that now. It'll bless you way down the road. I know you come to church, get your ties and all that, but there's still, still a little mess on you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh huh. Glory to God. There's a song that says, I got to clean up what I messed up. I can't get with that song completely because I know that there's some things that I just got to have God to clean up. Amen. Because he said that he's going to wash us and cleanse us in his blood. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wash and, and cleanse. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's lift our hands to the Lord. Let's say to the Lord, Lord, here we are. You got us. That's why my hand's up. I surrender. I know I'm messed up. And I know you know that I'm messed up. Lord, help me not to look at other folks' mess and just focus on mine. And I thank you that you chose me in my mess. 
I'm blessed, even in my mess, because of your grace. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen to that? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We thank God for you today. Hold on to that word. Share that word. Use that word. It's no good if you won't use it. Yeah, you can preach it. It ain't none of mine. You can preach it. You can teach it. That will preach somewhere else. I believe it will. It'll preach somewhere else in another place, in another setting. 